increasing the adaptability of the immune system. Um, zinc. Zinc works largely by trying to make sure that, I mean, there's, there's regions in proteins called zinc finger domains that literally look like little fingers, okay? And your body sticks zinc in the middle of them so it can make a quaternary structure. It can make a little hand or whatever you need to, to you know, attack the, you know, either rip stuff apart or to, you know, activate an enzyme or so on and so forth. That's part of how zinc works. Of course, it also works by being directly intracellularly toxic to some infected cells. So, um, but again, there, no, trust me, I've never seen anybody with a zinc toxicity. I mean, I suppose if you decided to like eat a battery, maybe you could get there, but I don't think it's a large possibility. Um, you know, in standardized dosages of 50 milligrams or so are quite effective. Um, and ironically enough, one of the few things, one of the things we're finding out about this particular crisis is, gee, these medications work well, but they only do so if your body has the right natural things to go along with them to work. I mean, we had all that all that controversy about hydroxychloroquine. And no, it didn't work in those studies. Why? Because they removed the natural element that works synergistically with it. Um, vitamins, vitamin D, vitamin C, um, zinc, so on and so forth. Um, and it's not, and I've had a lot of patients go, oh my God, I got to take all this stuff. And I have to take all this stuff. Again, because the immune system is adaptive, um, it's a matter of looking at what your strengths and what your weaknesses are. If you're you know, you're a hardcore, 100% organic vegan that's, you know, pounding down a ton of, you know, good solid vegetables and fruits every day, and you've got enough vitamin C to, you know, stave off, you know, stave off the oxidative powers of the entire tobacco industry, great, okay, maybe your problem is you're not getting out in the sun because you're spending too much time eating vegetables, so... <laughs> Unless you're gardening, unless you're yeah. gardening the vegetables. Maybe we got to work on your vitamin D. Maybe, you know, if, if complement is a problem, for example, all these proteins are made in your liver. If you've got liver problems, we need to come along and look at your liver. Um, this is not a one-stop shop. I mean, it's finding out where where the gaps in your immune system may be. Are you more pro-inflammatory? Do you have difficulties adapting? Do you have, um, you know, do we need, uh, do you have an autoimmune condition? Um, that may be distracting your immune system. Uh, do you have a pre-existing viral, uh, viral load? Have, your, have you got chronic Epstein-Barr? God forbid you've got one of those people that are fighting chronic candida. Do we need to knock those out so your immune system has the adaptability to go and fight it? Um, and kind of backing that up because I got rolled over it. And boy, you are really letting me just kind of hang myself, aren't you, Robert? No, 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 um, I love it. I love it. I will also say that one of the things, because this is all about adaptability, um, but adaptability in the immune system is all about the, the body's ability to step back from a crisis and say, okay, now it's time for me to address the next one. Well, unfortunately, the signal that our body has that tells us we need to be stuck in one form or another is largely inflammation. You know, and again, for any naturopath or functional medicine practitioner out there, this is, this is no, nothing new. So if I'm inflamed, if I've got a toxicity, that chronic inflammation promotes all of these uh, cytokines that promotes, which are basically a fancy term for the chemicals that the body produces, to your immune system that tells them we need to upregulate all of these differentiated cell types. And, you know, cytokines, you know, 1 through 12 and so on and so forth, and they each got various, various uh, stimuli and responses. But what it all boils down to is if, if we can reduce that level of inflammation, all of a sudden we remove the burden and the signal to the immune system. So now the immune system can use that vitamin C, can use that zinc, can use that vitamin D uh, to turn around and have more of an adaptive response toward whatever rolls across the, across the table at us. Nice. Man, so we went, we went deep. I'm going to backtrack a little bit. <laughs> so I'm going to backtrack on three things. And first thing, so we talked about zinc, we talked about vitamin D, and we also talked about yep. one and TH2. So first to the yep. zinc. Have you been reading any of the research talking about zinc being a positive ion? Therefore, you need a zinc ion phoretic to help increase zinc intracellularly. So, for instance, a lot of research has been looking at quercetin because it's a natural zinc ion phoretic. Have you seen any of those studies? Um, I have. I've, I've not read them, but I've, I've kind of caught it in passing. I mean, it's like everybody else, you get a ton of data. Um, no, and that's, that's part of the reason that I think quercetin may be working the way that it does is actually increasing the, uh, that's why we think, for example, it may be so useful in, in heart muscle because it actually helps balance out a lot of those ions. So that doesn't surprise me terribly much. Now, I, again, I think that quercetin, quercetin is a good place to start, but like everything else, it's a matter of what do your intrinsic levels look like? And, and you know me, I'm all about, you know, testing. So, you know, even if it, whether it's, you know, the simple zinc tally test, which only everybody fails, um, or one of the more advanced serum tests, it may not be a bad idea to get those levels checked. 
um, some people may not need the, the, the quercetin to bring it up, but um, you know, to bring it into the cell. But if you've got, if you've got issues already that imply it, I mean, we, I mean, we use quercetin if you've got congestive heart failure, we use quercetin if you've got um, uh, problems with your, your allergies because it thins out mucus. And let me tell you, because I'm from Austin, um, for those of you that may be out of state, we are the allergen capital of the world. There is always some little thing blooming that is making the noses stop up here and quercetin will dry you up faster than, you know, faster than reading a stereo manual. I mean, it is dry city. Uh, <laughs> I like quercetin and it does well. It doesn't surprise me that works synergistically. Um, and that, that brings a good point. Um, the, a lot of times we have difficulties with natural substances, even with pharmaceuticals, because the delivery mechanism is impeded by absorption. It's like I was talking about earlier with the gut. If you've got an inflamed gut, no matter how great your, you know, your, your nutrients may be, you're not going to pull them across because the gut's not capable of doing it. But we've got the gut lining, we've got transport in the blood, we've got the cellular membranes. There are all these barriers trying to get the, the stuff from where it is to where it needs to be to work. So, you know, quercetin, like mycelizing something, like liposomal encapsulating it, like um, uh, turmeric, one of the things we're finding out, and you and I have had this conversation, um, part of the problem was absorption, but right. that's when you had, like, standardize it down to this one component that's got a high amount of just that, uh, just that curcumin. But when you actually get, like, a full natural form of it, so it's actually got all the subcomponents, all of a sudden the absorption gets better. So, um it's uh, one of my favorite movies, a real genius. He used to have this great line in there. It's like, do you think it's design error or a launch error? And my, you know, my running joke is, what do you mean a launch error? It's all about design errors, right? You didn't design it right. Well, no, the design may be okay, but it's all about the delivery. It's all about, well, it's about like my bad jokes, right? It's all about the delivery. Um, if you don't have the full form, if you don't combine it with the, the quercetin, if you don't have the liposomal uh, or the mycelized subfraction, maybe you're not absorbing that stuff. In which case, you know, you are you may do a great job of, you know, pulling in 100 milligrams of zinc a day, but if it's a zinc oxide, yeah, you're not going to pull it in very well. It's got it's got to have a delivery mechanism in there somehow. Into the cell. Into the cell. Yeah. So that's why a lot of people no, will use like a chelated form, like a zinc glycinate, right, to help get the zinc, from my understanding, out of the extracellular space and then into the intracellular space. Yeah. So that's like a lot of these... So I always talk to, to doctors every day and some, you know, some are more conventional and they tell me, Hey, supplements don't work. I'm like, look doc, 20 years ago, if you're using a calcium carbonate or a zinc oxide or a magnesium oxide, yeah, those probably didn't work because the absorption was super low, but technology research, yeah. especially in the supplements is growing and evolving. And it's, if you yeah. weren't into supplements now, I can guarantee if we did a blood test on some of these doctors that the labs would show us severe nutrient deficiencies so well and and even with even without doing the nutrients because conventional allopathic mds don't run a lot of i mean they, even if you look at uh, at nutritional uh, nutritional values they just they're not familiar with that blood work but they're familiar with a lot of the conventional blood work and the, the thing is you can take standardized like um let's say let's use uh, fish oil okay um you know, a nice natural non-esterified, you know, or, or natural triglyceride form of fish oil. Um, you can run CRP, you can run ESR, you can run um, ANA, you can run a lot of the inflammatory markers, for example, um, and dose them with fish oil. And there are plenty of studies out there that actually show their effectiveness. Um, and uh, the doctors that claim that there's no studies that do that, it's like, I invite them. It's like, go ahead, prove me wrong, because let's go over to PubMed, which is, you know, the grand repository of all medical knowledge. And it's open to the public. Fine, go in and type in, like, you know, fish oil. And, you know, and of course, you're going to get papers on both sides. But it's not like there's no data out there at all. And depending upon how you, how careful you are about looking at that data, you can find that there's plenty of out data out there that supports it. You're right, Robert. I mean, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, there wasn't a lot of published studies out there in, you know, good journals and refereed journals. But there's no excuse in saying there's no data out there now because there's tons of it if you bother to go out and look. Um, that's also why it's important. And I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to plug you, but, I mean, but that's also why it's important to be careful what supplement companies you're working with um, because it's all about the science behind the supplements, to borrow a friend of mine's phrase. Um, you've got to make sure that you have not only supplements that have been manufactured well and have a good efficacy, but that you can prove that have had proven uh, studies that show based on this, I'm having this effect and I can show that I can show that on a, on a clinical level that I'm having the effects that I'm looking for. 
because you know you can take all the all the pills you want in the world you have to be able to prove that they're actually working so exactly. yeah love it and then um I, I don't know if you follow, follow dr bredesen he talks a lot about copper pipes we know that copper and zinc kind of have an inverse relationship if you have a lot yep. of fittings you might have a zinc deficiency and for a lot of people listening I'm, what do you think the population is that people are zinc deficient and oh, what, uh, easy. Uh, think that every day to, to help that. Okay. Well, and I, and, and the, my answer to that is the answer is like 80%. And the reason I say 80%, because, um, so let's go back to what we know zinc does. Um, and you're right. Copper does compete with zinc in a lot of respects. And that balance is very important. In fact, if that balance gets too far out of whack, that's one from a functional medicine standpoint, that's one of the indicators for cancer is mm -hmm. when you have an imbalanced ratio between those. Um, copper deficiency, on the other hand, if you push too far the other way, because it's important that balance maintains, you get too far out of copper deficiency, all of a sudden you can start driving, driving them forward into hypertension. Weird. Um, yeah, go figure. It's always those weird little things that we all find out. Um, but so let's go back to what zinc does in the body. It, it forms those little zinc finger domains. One of the proteins that it forms is that it helps form is gustin, which is in your mouth, right? And gustin is one of those proteins that helps you taste heavy metals. So it literally looks like a little hand and you get your zinc over here and it kind of glob gloms onto it and carries it over to, um, to your taste buds. Well, if you are zinc deficient, because it's like having a finger with all, you know, a hand with all the fingers unraveled. Um, if you've got somebody who is zinc deficient, what will happen is the gustin will absorb the zinc. Um, it'll work on refolding the zinc finger domains in the gustin itself, and there won't be any zinc left over to be transported over to the receptor. So one of the tricks, and I say tricks because this is like, you know, all naturopaths have like our, our um, you know, our, our, our party favors, right? We have like our party tricks. Do this and see, ooh, that's amazing stuff. Um, one, of the, one, of the, one of them is the zinc, zinc tally test, right? Um, the zinc tally test where you, you take a, you take aqueous zinc and you, you know, you swish around in your mouth and, and does it taste like water? Um, or if it tastes metallic, how long does it take for it to start taking metallic? And basically if you can taste it, you've got enough. If it tastes like water and takes a long time for you to start tasting it, it means you're deficient in zinc. Mm. Well, yeah, I did this for years. I gave up doing it. Why? Because everybody fails. Nobody passes that test. You know, there's the odd, like, hardcore vegan taking 20 supplements a day that actually does have enough. But the vast majority of people, I mean, easily 70, 75% or more, all failed that test. That's why I call it a naturopathic party trick, because it's like, boop, you know, say you need it. Um, it's kind of like iodine tally testing, which everybody likes too, which is like, you know, you take, you take a, take a two by two area of, of iodine and paint it on your forearm and see how long it takes it to disappear. Um, any doc that's ever worked, you know, an ER will tell you if you put paint betadine on a patient um, for a minor surgical procedure, you paint it on, you know, and stitch something up and half an hour later, you pull back the sterile field and, you know, it's gone. Look, Behold, there's no man behind the curtain, right? It's a, it's a party trick. Why? Because when you're deficient in iodine, the body will actively transport and pull that iodine across and make it disappear. Iodine in a person that's, that's, been, uh, that's been supplementing that has adequate levels of iodine, that's, you know, that iodine patch will last for 18 to 24 hours. But in most people, it's like gone within two to three hours. I mean, it's so, you know, again, the number of people that fail these are huge. Why? Because and Robert, again, you and I have had this conversation. We are the most overfed and undernutriented population on earth. We eat a lot of food, but it's incredibly nutri nutritionally depleted. I mean, that's part of the reason people eat so damn much is we get that drive to eat because we don't get enough food that actually feeds us. You know, right. you notice. You don't you know?